This video is just a short extract from the entire course. If you wish to see all of the videos from this series at higher quality and in far larger screen size, head over to ifskills.com. Something that every 3D animator needs to know how to deal with is the issue of surface normals. Simply put, a surface normal determines which side of a face or polygon will properly render. The important thing to understand is that in order for a surface to show up come render time, in other words, for you to actually see that surface when your scene is rendered, its normal must point toward you. If it does, you see that portion of the surface. If it doesn't, in other words, if its normal is pointing in the opposite direction, away from you, when rendered, you simply won't be able to see that specific area on the object. And it's not just a situation that 3ds Max has to deal with. Every 3D software program will have its issues with surface normals. It's just the nature of the beast. The surfaces that you create usually only show one side of that surface. Let's see if we can't figure things out using a file named Surface Normals. You can find it in the Working Files folder. Let's take our object for a quick spin so we can simply verify that it's indeed a three-dimensional surface, something that has both an inside and out. We'll orbit using the Alt-W keyboard shortcut. OK, now that we know that it's indeed three-dimensional, let's go ahead and render things out. Now, we know the whole thing's there, so why is it exactly that the inside doesn't seem to be showing up when we render? Well, it again deals with the object's surface normals. Let's add an Edit Mesh modifier to the object real quick so we can get a better visual display of what a normal actually is. We'll close our render, select our object, then head over to the Modify column. With the Edit Mesh now in the stack, we'll open up the entry heading down to the Element way of selecting. This simply gives us a different method of selecting a series of faces or polygons. With that now active, we can click anywhere on our object. To display the surface normals, we'll now drop below the stack into the Selection section. In there, you'll find a button that says Show Normals. Go ahead and activate it. The blue lines that you see represent the direction in which each normal on the object points. Every face on a polygonal mesh surface having a normal. The normal determines which side of the face or polygon will be visible when the surface is rendered. In order for you to be able to see a specific face or polygon, that sub-object's normal has to be pointing toward you. If it instead is pointing away from you, you just plain won't be able to see that particular sub-object. If we orbit around the object again, you'll notice that all of the normals on the object are pointing toward the outside of the surface. With that happening on the back side of the object, when we look into the middle of the vase, we're actually looking at the opposite side of those surface faces. And in that, we can't see that specific surface when we render. So you gotta always remain real conscientious of what will and what won't show when you get to rendering. You'll see this issue all the time when you have open surfaces. Especially when lathing objects when you're continually dealing with open ends on one side or the other of the lathe. Like with the top of the vase that we have in our scene. Now, this visibility issue can be reversed by changing a setting down toward the bottom of the Modify Controls. Back in the Modify column, we'll right-click, then from the menu, choose Surface Properties. Down in the category, you'll see a section called Normals, and in that section, a button named Flip. Go ahead and click on that. Let's go ahead and render again, and we'll see what difference that change has made. Now we're seeing only the insides of the surface, being that the normals have been switched to the opposite side of each face. Flipping the normals again will take us back to the way things originally looked. Let's close our render, click again on Flip, then re-render. Each stick is now pointing outward, and look at the difference that's made in our rendered view. Now, what you really want to be sure to keep your eyes out for are situations where an object's surface normals are pointing all over the place. In that I mean some normals are pointing out, other normals are pointing in. Situations like that can really become a problem. You'll see that many times when importing mesh from the internet. The model comes in without a problem. But when rendered, the object appears to have holes or geometry that seems to be deleted or excluded for some reason. You get that look many times simply because during the transfer into Max, some of the object's faces were simply misinterpreted on import. 
you end up with some faces pointing out, some faces pointing in, and as a result, the geometry, at least at that point in time, looks completely unusable because of all those abnormalities. Now in those situations, many times all you gotta do is unify the direction that everything is facing. Let's first set up our object so it has that normal facing problem. We'll close our render, then in the viewport, click away from the vase. Then, back over in the stack, we'll change over to a polygon selection method. Holding down the control key, I'll now select a series of polygons on both the upper right hand side and lower left hand side of the vase. Once I've done that, back in the Surface Properties category, I'll again click on Flip. Now when I do that, the vase now has some surface normals pointing out, while others are pointing in. Let's see how that looks if we render. Well, there you go. Certainly not something we're going to want to keep as is. Here's how we can make the fix. We'll close the render, heading back to the element level of selection. Once that's been activated, we can go ahead back in our viewport, clicking anywhere on our vase. With the entire surface now selected, you can see how the surface normals are indeed pointing in all different kinds of directions. Back in the surface properties in the modify column, this time we'll click on unify. The surface normals are back to all pointing in one direction, let's go ahead and render and see how things look. As you can see by the results, the surface normals are all pointing inward. Let's close our render, this time clicking on flip. The blue sticks are all now pointing out, let's render again. Now, I was mentioning a little earlier how the issue of normals was a pretty common thing when dealing with lathe surfaces. Not just around the openings where you might be looking at the backside of a particular part of the skin, but also with the way you draw your original line that you end up spinning. The direction you draw, left or right within the view, then determines the direction the normals are going to point on the surface. Now, because the normals pointing in the wrong direction is such a normal occurrence with a lathe, the modifier actually has an option that allows you to make a quick conversion. That conversion being in the direction that the surface normals point. To show you that, let's first close the render, then delete the Edit Mesh modifier from the vase. Down in the Parameters category below the Modifier stack, you'll see a setting called Flip Normals. Let's activate that, then render again. This in essence takes each and every surface normal on the lathe surface, turning it in the opposite direction. Now when lathing a line in a project, when you render if you get things looking inside out, all you simply have to do is to turn on or off the Flip Normals button as needed. In our situation here, we want to make sure the option is off. Unchecking the setting and rendering again, you'll see that we're back to the way we originally started. Now that identifies the problem inherent with surface normals, but it doesn't give us an actual solution to making things right. When wanting to officially fix the problem, we've got a couple of different ways that we can go. The quickest and easiest repair is to simply go to the material editor, adding a two-sided material. Let's try that. We'll close the render and open up the material editor. Let's now grab the orange material, pulling it onto the object in our scene. If we render again, we'll realize that simply adding a material is not the answer. No, the solution is actually a specific option on our material. It's called two sided. Let's close our render, then head back to the editor looking for the control. You'll find it directly above the color swatches on the far right side. Let's activate the two sided option and we'll render again. So that gives us a quick down and dirty solution, but we still have a problem. Let's close both the render and the material editor and we'll orbit around the vase. Even though the object is no longer showing us the problems inherent with surface normals, the thickness of our surface is still, well, as thin as a line. And that should make sense because it was a single line that we actually lathed to create the object. Looking at the lip under the top of our vase, you'll see just how thin our geometry actually is. The real solution here would be to double up on the line that we used to make the vase. Now before we do that though, let's go back in the Material Editor, turning off the two-sided option. I just want to make sure that that's not part of our solution. With that done, we'll render again just so we can verify what we're starting with. Let's now close our render, heading back to a four-way viewport configuration. We can do that using the Alt-W shortcut. And once we've done that, we'll go back in the stack, clicking at the line level. This gives us a better indication of which viewport the line was originally drawn. 
With the way things are lined out, that would be the front view. Let's go ahead and activate that, taking it full screen. Once there, we'll open up the line level in the stack, heading down to Spline. We can then click anywhere on the line to make the selection. OK, now we're wanting to double up on our line. We can do that using the Outline command. You'll find it a little farther down in the controls. When you've located the button, activate it, then put your mouse directly on top of the line. When the cursor changes, hold down the left mouse button, pushing diagonally to the side. The distance that you're creating between the two lines will represent the thickness of the lathe vase. Now, the only thing you want to be careful of is make sure that no part of that line intersects in any way, shape, or form. When you're happy with the way things look, go ahead and let go of your mouse. Now we can go back in the stack, reactivate the lathe command, then return to four viewports. Let's now take the perspective view back to full screen and we'll render again. So we now no longer have a problem with the surface normals. Let's now close the render and orbit our viewport so we can see the newly created thickness that we've added to our vase. Now, there is one other option that we could use to both solve the normals problem and the original thick as a line issue that we saw on the vase. That would be to apply a special modifier called Shell. Now, before we do that though, let's go ahead and undo the outlining of our spline. That can be accomplished by simply typing Control Z. Now, being back to a single lined lathe surface, we can go ahead and apply our Shell modifier. In adjusting the thickness of the geometry, we can now choose either the inner or outer amount. I'm going to use the inner amount. I'll take that value up to around 10, then orbit a little lower on our vase so I can see the thickness of my newly created geometry. Rendering one last time, the shell modifier solves our surface normal problem. So that'll get you all squared away with having to deal with the issue of surface normals. Chances of the problem coming up, those missing faces, is pretty much a sure deal. So remember the choices and the techniques that you can use to overcome the problem.